Today I will talk about uh, changes of the nuclear landscape during pre-implantation development of fertilized and cloned bovine embryos. I will give you a little bit of a review of what we've learned over the years uh, uh, from chip chromatin IP experiments and from some immunofluorescence and, and live cell imaging uh, when we've done our focus gene studies. Uh, this is work, our work, and of course, work of many labs. I'm trying to summarize here. I run a bioinformatics group at the University of Edinburgh, and, uh, and we've been playing around with trying to uh, model higher order chromatin structure. And by higher order chromatin structure, in, in this case, what I'm talking about is high C derived structure. Today I'm going to talk about how a transcription factor can be regulated by oxidation. During the heat shock response, John talked talk about the fact that um, a set of genes are turned on, but most of the genome is repressed. So we thought that this would be a good system to look at changes in 3D architecture. Regarding transcriptional regulation, today I wanted to talk about protein kinases, which are key molecules in the regulation of gene expression. At the conference we've had international speakers from all over the world and they've really presented some groundbreaking data and for, for me personally to be allowed to present my work here. Today I really like to focus on nuclear energy and I know that nuclear energy has the power to really <coughs> polarise people's opinions but I hope that in the next couple of minutes I'll be able to convince you that we in Miguel's lab have discovered a novel way in which nucleus itself can generate ATP and energy, independent of the mitochondria. Let me start out by explaining what I actually mean by internal retention. Most uh, splicing happens co-transcriptionally, and so while uh, RNA polymerase 2 is uh, transcribing this gene here. I'm going to redact the second part of my title today for the sake of uh, timing and coherence. In my laboratory, we're interested in understanding the molecular basis for a number of pathologies that arise in um, a variety of rare human diseases that are associated with de defective DNA damage responses and chromosomal instability. It's a fantastic symposium. It's a great lineup of speakers, fantastic mix between uh, medical issues, basic research. And the protein I'll talk about today was originally discovered more than 20 years ago uh, by Gideon Dreyfus, who referred to it as HNRMPD, and basically was a dumb RNA binding protein located on the 3' prime UTR, or untranslated region of the mRNA. Our lab is interested in uh, lineage reprogramming, and we specifically study this in the context of uh, hematopoiesis. <laughs> My PI recommended the, this symposium because it, the symposium appeared many gene regulation and stem cells. I often ask people in the audience how many people want to live long, and then I tell them that this is what you face. So this is, these are the diseases, this is a partial list of the diseases of aging. But if you live long enough, you can be pretty sure that you're going to get one, probably more than one, of these diseases. Today I'm going to talk about what we think is uh, the basis for initiating cell fate changes. So I'm going to be telling you about a um, uh, piece of biology that has to do uh, with uh, uh, injury repair in the liver. We are interested in, in the genetic control of development, and um, in particular in the uh, transcription regulation of one gene family, 
which is the Hawks genes. I want to just give you a little touch of, the, of our project. And there is a focus on understanding the novel roles of the NT3A and the NT3B at the Nancer gene body during human epidermal cell, cell differentiation. Landmark scientists, we've had a lot of really good feedback on the work, and we think that uh, we've made some great collaborations. And a lot of effort in the lab is really dedicated to the question how how this this uh, remarkable uh, um, conversion from a boring looking I'm not saying boring boring looking fibroblast to this very elegant uh, cell type of a highly complex uh, neuron can actually be accomplished with just these three transcription factors. I'm going to talk about reprogramming, de differentiation, and re differentiation in vivo. It's very nice because it's some, of, some of the reactors, it's, it's difficult to me to understand, but the, their study is so deep, yeah. so I can get the many information. I need more study <laughs> to survive here. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. And the hospitality of our Catalan guests, you know, as usual. Fantastic.